I've seen a lot of people say that the Anycube Cobra S1 is the Bamboo Lab A1 killer. Well, the S1 has its ups and downs, and we will definitely go over the issues I was having with it. But let's check out my first impressions of the Cobra S1. So this video is going to be mostly a first impressions of the machine and what you can expect and some of its features. I have about 45 hours of print time on it so far. Disclaimer, Anycube did send me out the Cobra S1 for a review, but they're not paying me and all my opinions are my own. It was nice that there was no assembly needed for the actual printer. I did get the combo unit, so I did have to screw on the filament tube and the tubes connecting the A's to the S1, but it only took about 5 to 10 minutes. I did have to unscrew the ace holder from the machine and unscrew the print bed. So it took me about 30 minutes and I was up and printing. The ace doesn't have any RFD chips in the machine. So when you load new filament in the machine, you'll have to go in there and manually add what type of filament it is and what color it is. Now it only takes a second, but it sure would be nice to have those RFIDs. Now this is something I found out after unboxing and playing around with the machine for a little bit, but the Ace has a built-in dryer. The dryer only has a max temperature of 55C, so you can dry TPU and PLA. For a built-in dryer, I think that's pretty good, and I don't plan on using many filaments other than PLA. Just under the dryer settings, you have filament backup. So if you have two of the same color filaments loaded into the Ace and one runs out, it'll start using the other one automatically. Being an enclosed printer and with a hot end that can reach 330 degrees Celsius, you could print most of the major filaments like PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, ASA, nylon, PC, and carbon fiber. The S1 does have pretty good lighting in the machine and a decent camera. It's not terrible, but it's also not good. Compared to the Bamboo Lab A1, it was a lot better. I think it was about 480p. You can get away using the time lapses for social media, but as soon as you blow it up onto a large monitor, it looks pretty bad. If you guys are enjoying the video, do me a favor, leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. I do plan on making a lot more 3D printed videos and tech videos. I'll also have affiliate links to all the tech I use and have reviewed in the past in the description. I really do think the print quality is pretty great. I use all base settings for my prints, so it's super easy for beginners to just start printing. I didn't even have any bed adhesion issues like I was having on the Bamboo Lab A1. I printed a bunch of parts for a Space Marine bolter, and I don't think I had any issues with any of the prints. Everything looks super smooth and it fits together great. I wanted to have it all glued together for this video, but I decided to paint it after and I just don't have the time to do that right now. I did have an issue with a different print and I learned that PLA doesn't like to be printed in an enclosure, so an easy fix was just to leave the door open. So onto the issue I was having. When I was changing colors, they would leave a little nub of filament left in the hot end and it wasn't getting extruded through. I ended up having to take the printer head apart three times to take that piece out manually just to be able to start printing again. Now, if this was a mid print changing colors, I've never had an issue with that. I only ever had an issue if I finished printing with one color and started a new print with another color. After emailing any cube, they suggested I take apart the head one more time and also the little filament feeder part too. And nothing inside the 
the feeder looked like it was stuck or broken off or nothing fell out, but after putting it back together, I haven't had any issues. Anycubic does say that the printer is pretty quiet and comparing it to the A1, it's just a little bit louder. Not much, but just a little bit. Overall, for my first impressions and if I would recommend this printer, I think it's a pretty good printer. Other than the issues I was having, there's not a lot of bad things I can say about this printer. Again, comparing it to the Bamboo Lab A1, which is a very similar printer, it's about $100 more. So if you're on a budget, you might want to stick with the Bamboo Lab A1. As for me personally, after using the Bamboo Lab A1 and the Cobra S1, I'm leaning a little towards the A1. The Bamboo Lab Slicer, even though it's pretty much the same as the Anycubic Slicer, it's just a little bit better. But if you really need an enclosed printer and a dryer in your multi-filament changer, then go with the Anycubic. There's really nothing wrong with the machine. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. If you already own a 3D printer, let me know what brand you already have. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe.